Well, good morning, traders. U.S. stocks rallied strongly on Friday on a, a much better than expected non-farm payroll, um, some easing in banking sector fears, and also uh, continued strong earnings out of the tech sector with Apple uh, handily beating expectations and rallying very strongly. Um, the NASDAQ was up over 2%, which, which basically erased the, uh, the whole week's losses, uh, finished slightly in the green for the week, the first week in May. Now, non-farm payrolls, they came in at 253,000 jobs uh, created in April against an expectation of 181,000, so a big beat there. And the unemployment rate also surprisingly dropped to 3.4%, um, where the expectation was 36 So the consensus showing the labour market is remaining very resilient in the US in, face, in, in the face of these Fed hikes. Uh, gave some investors some hope for a soft landing and saw risk, ass, risk assets uh, a rally across the board there. Um, now, the Fed has a dual mandate for inflation and employment. So with employment out of the way, uh, all eyes this week will be on the inflation reports. So starting Wednesday, we'll, we'll be seeing import price inflation, uh, producer price inflation, and, and consumer price inflation. Uh, all three, according to the expectations, are set to show the disinflation trend is now firmly in place. So the futures market is now dovishly pricing in um, no further rate hike rate hikes from the Fed and actual cuts starting in September. So risks are to the downside for risk assets if, if these inflation figures do come in hot. Um, we also have the Bank of England on Thursday. They'll be releasing their monetary policy report and official bank rate. Um, after some hawkish inflation and wage data last month, they're expected to hike 25 basis points to bring the official rate up to 4.5%. This will probably be their last hike uh, this cycle, I think, although it's unlikely that the Bank of England will, will shut down any options going forward. Uh, the company statements expect them to, to retain the guidance that implies that further tightening is possible if data requires it. So markets are pro currently pricing in a 93% chance they will hike on Thursday. So um, the, as with the other central bank decisions, the, the volatility will come from the statement and their forward guidance rather than the actual rate decision itself. Uh, the charts that I watched this week, gold, now it's flirted with all-time highs last week. It fell short by about $8 an ounce to retrace before testing that support level at 2010. Now, that, that level there was resistance for, uh, for most of the second half of April when uh, gold was stuck in that range. It did break through on some of that bank stress and it's held it, but now it's retraced back to it. So that's a key level to watch uh, in the week ahead. Now, the inflation figures will play a big part, I think, on where gold goes this week. Uh, the other chart to watch for me is the is cable pounds us and now remains firmly in an uptrend breaking uh, previous 2023 20, highs testing its resistance level around that 126.67 which was the highest set back in june last year now now it's rallied very strongly from its lows in late 2022 but if you zoom out in the chart it's still got a long way to go to, to catch up to where its median price is against the us dollar um, so hawkish bank of england on thursday could see a break of these highs, that resistance level there and another leg higher.